when Wayne brought me in, Rob had a nice portion of the album kind of completed. I was given the task of bringing in new writers and producers to help the process. My task was I don't have to produce the records, I just got to go find the people that Wayne can't find. So when Superman High came out, when Banging the Head Boys came out, when Ego came out, all of these was producers and songwriters that I found. When, when we got a Grammy nomination, Wayne called me personally. We got a Grammy nomination for Untitled. He said, congratulations. Wayne said, I need a young Justin Timberlake-like kid, white kid. I said, no, I did a Phantom. I said, no, you need Jacob Lattimore. That's what you need. And I stuck to my guns. Wayne brought Jacob into Jive and he never left. And so that created a brand for me to be able to be looked at. So when they brought me, and then I'm going to tell you one last thing. When I lived here in Chicago, I worked at AM Records. How I got the job was being at a Jack the Rapper, and luckily I got paired up with, I got paired up with Brooke Payne who actually put me in a position to offer a lady named Anna Harbin, who was a photographer at the time here, a chance to take pictures, and he offered me a chance to um, put somebody else on. That led to Carl Washington seeing me hang out with New Edition, and them, which led to me getting a job at AM Records, which led to me meeting Janet Jackson, which I loved that moment. <laughs> but right after that was over with, he gave me a bunch of whack records to work. My first record he gave me was an artist named Overweight Pooch. A big fat black girl standing next to a refrigerator. That rapped. And I had to go work that record. I mean, it was a refrigerator, a real refrigerator. She was standing next to it, and I had to go work that record. So when y'all be talking about, man, I want to work on this one, I don't want to work on that. Well, I didn't have a choice. I had to work a lot of records that weren't hot. The very first record that I worked that was hot was Optimistic by Sounds of Blackness. That was the first record I ever worked that was hot. And I was like excited because it was the first time I didn't have to beg nobody to be my friend. <laughs> when you got a hot record, you don't got to beg nobody. Now, get to my story. When Wayne brought me, when, uh, my, when Cap brought me in to hire me, he said, originally we are a gospel label. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar has a label called Arrow Records that was normally a gospel label. Taffy Dollar, which is Creflo Dollar's wife, has a very, very talented daughter named Drea who is, is not interested in being gospel. They chose to step outside of just doing gospel records and step into the secular world and take their label and expand it. So they brought a guy named Cap, which is Capriccio Scats, who used to be at CSAC, and Capriccio, in his mind, this man wants to be LaFace. He wants to be L.A. Reed. So in his mind, that's what he focusing on. So his mind was, I need to bring in somebody that can help me paint that vision. I was brought in, and the very first project that I was asked to work was Ann Nesby. Ann Nesby is the same lady who, who looked out for me as a young promoter here in Chicago with Sounds of Blackness, her and Gary Hines. So, when I'm sitting there and God says, I'm giving this lady to you now to take care of her because she looked out for you back then, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. He said, well, after this, you know, you're going to get to work on Kim Burrell next. I said, yeah, but I want to work on Ann Nesby because that's somebody who looked out for me at one point in time when I wasn't on. That's how... It works. 
I told you that story to let you understand that you never know how that relationship is going to come full circle. You never know what you're being called to do. A lot of people hear Arrow Records, all they know is Arrow Records is a gospel label. But they know me to be different. My brand is different. So now I'm getting an opportunity to take Arrow Records into a whole nother arena. No, we're not going to be doing um, a hardcore rap. No, we're not going to be cussing out people on our records, degrading women on our records. No, we're not going to be, but we're going to put out, because really, you know, at the end of the day, what all that is, is this is how we look at it, just so y'all understand. For every curse word, for every person you degrade, for everything you do, that shows a lack of your writing ability. 